Hello, it's Curtis, and I'm here to answer some of the questions that you have submitted. How is it possible to have so many dogs, some with irreversible trauma, in one place without them fighting each other? I would say that, of course, some dogs fight and have conflict, but because the trauma and the fact that they're with each other and that they may fight are not necessarily related, then it's easier than you might imagine. So, for example, some of the more shy or traumatized or fearful dogs that we have, when you look at what they're like when no one's in the run or no one's around, they're actually some of the most playful, they love each other's company, and each other's company is almost like therapy for them. That's when they're at their happiest. Um, so they're not likely to fight because they've been well socialized to dogs because of their background, perhaps not so well socialized to humans. Um, and then you might have other dogs whereby if they were attacked by a group of dogs on the beach, for example, they would be much more likely to be um, uncomfortable or traumatized when they're around other dogs. So with dogs like that, we would see if there are certain types of dogs or particular dogs that they do like being around. And sometimes the personalities mesh and they get on. And if there are dogs that really don't like being around other dogs for whatever reason, then they might prefer to be housed alone. Some dogs prefer the company of humans to other dogs. What is behind preparing a former street dog to be integrated into a loving home and family? I would say that depends on the dog. Um, for some dogs it involves a lot more than with other dogs. So for example, if a street dog was a village dog, so like a free roaming dog, but was fed by people in the village, might be well socialized, might be friendly with people and used to them, but may have lived its whole life for how many years, we don't know, never being on a leash. So with a dog like that, it might just be a case of getting them used to walking on a leash and having limited freedom that they're not used to. Um, if it were a dog at the other end of the extreme that had spent its life living on a wasteland or in a jungle, and perhaps being fed by one particular person, then they would be much more likely to be scared of people in general, especially strangers. And helping prepare them might involve something more like gradually getting them used to different people and teaching them that not every new person is a threat or something to be scared of. Um, so yeah, the answer is, depends on the dog. Do you notice a large difference between puppies you rescue and older dogs with unknown socialization history? Generally, yeah, there'll be a difference. Um, main one being that if the dog is older, it will be more difficult to change their behavior or get them used to something new because they're more, the behaviors that they're exhibiting are more established or they're more set in their ways for want of a better term. Um, they're more practiced at doing what they're doing, so it's harder to change it. With puppies, that's often less so. Also, puppies may have experienced a shorter period of trauma or negative experiences. Um, and then also, I think that perhaps, because puppies tend to be cute and look sweet, it's also easier to help them recover because people respond to them better than they would a big scary dog that's behaving in the same way. So a seven-year-old dog behaving in one way and a little puppy behaving in the same way, the person will react worse to the bigger dog. So it can be harder to teach that dog about people if the people are naturally responding more negative than they are to the puppy. Are there certain behaviors you see in some rescues that might indicate they will transition to being a pet really well? Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there are certain things you see, so it could be that they are more comfortable in new situations or you can tell from their behavior that fewer situations are new to them. They've been exposed to more in the first place. Um, maybe they're less strongly affected by things that bother them. Maybe they return to normal more quickly after things have bothered them. Maybe they respond well to strangers. They're well socialized. They love a range of different people. All those kind of things tend to indicate that those kind of dogs will be better than others at adjusting to being in a, in a loving family home. We've also received some questions asking for your tips and advice on specific dogs' behaviours. Like, what are the tips to stop your former soy dog from eating everything she finds on the floor when she's off the leash? 
I'll give sort of general guidelines rather than addressing a specific dog's behavior because every dog is an individual. So, first of all, I would say because they're street dogs, we need to look at how they're experiencing the situation. They may have been used to scavenging around on the ground, picking things up in order to survive. If they were like a village dog or they lived outside 7-Eleven, they would also be used to people feeding them on the ground. So it may be that to them, food on the ground is food, like it's their dinner. Um, so I would say bear that in mind when you're interacting with them and when you're addressing the issue. Aside from that, you could approach it in the normal ways that would be advised. So training a dog to come when you call them, a good recall, training a dog to leave it. All those things can work. And you can look up how to do those, some good sites online, books. Um, but I would say generally with any behavior, with any behavior issue, if you can get a professional behaviorist or trainer to help you, that's always good. So basically, the normal methods that you would use for any dog that's picking up food off the ground, but understand that it might be a lot more difficult with a street dog than a pet dog, because to them, they might have been doing it for years out of necessity. Any advice on food aggression? My dog doesn't react with us, but when other family members who don't live with us go near him or his food during mealtime, he snaps them. So first of all, I must say that Food aggression, depending on the severity, always get the help of a professional trainer or behaviorist um, to make sure everyone's safe. Much like previously, you can follow the normal standard advice that you would for a dog with food aggression. Um, you can work on the food aggression itself. But again, I would say if it's a street dog, remember that depending on their past circumstances, it may have benefited them to be aggressive over food. So they might be more likely to do it. Aside from the instinctual nature of it, they might be more likely to do it because that's how they survive. Um, they might have lived in conditions where there were lots of other dogs around or where people were shooing them away when they were trying to eat. So bear that in mind. And then I would say, if they're only snapping at certain people as well, again, perhaps with the help of a professional, but look into whether it's also an issue of they don't feel comfortable enough around the people in question. Um, and it's just more clear when there's food involved than not. It could be numerous di different issues. So I would say look into those things, bear in mind their street dog history, and if in doubt, get professional help. Thank you so much for answering all the questions, Caritas. You're welcome. And thank you, Mirko. <laughs>